Hey everybody, Janet Urban here, founder of Friends in Film. I help people get consistent work in the film industry in acting, directing, writing, producing, hair, makeup, sound, stunts, special effects, special effects, makeup. I've been in the business for 20 years and I actually do commercials. It took me a long time to get to this top level work where I make around $2,000 a day and I don't have to work that many days to make a lot of money in the film industry. So the film industry is very high paying. And I've worked on movies, I've done, worked on music videos, I've worked on TV shows, I've worked on reality, I've worked on news, I've worked on sports for the NBA and NFL, I've worked on documentaries, I've done National Geographic, I've traveled all over the world! I've had the most amazing life that I could have never imagined when I started off before 20 years ago as a copier salesperson. So I'm here to teach you in this video how to get into this amazing industry and it is all word of mouth. It is all based on connections and that's what keeps most people out. That's what keeps most people from not being successful to get into the film industry. But I'm going to show you how to do it and I've been doing this and taking people that have never been in the industry to working full time in the industry for the last six years. So I'm going to share with you some of my secrets today. So let's get into it. What we're going to do today in this video is I'm going to show you how you can make a career where you're in demand, in camera, in writing, in producing, in directing, in editing, in sound, hair, makeup, stunts, special effects, special effects makeup. And I'm going to show you how to do it in the fastest way, the friends and film way. And there's a lot of people that would love to have careers where they're in demand because this is a freelance business. But they don't know what I'm about to teach you. And I'm going to show you how to do this from the very beginning, okay? So let's get into this. So you've got your passion, camera, sound, writing, directing, all these niches that I don't need to say anymore because you know what they are, right? And then you've got the film industry. And this is a camera, right, with a dollar sign on it. That's what it is, a camera. But this signifies the paid film industry. And you want to have your, the stuff that you're passionate about pay you and make a career out of it in the film industry. A lot of people have a vague idea of what it's like to have a career in the film industry, but not really have a crystal clear vision of it, so I want to tell you what that is. You are looking at making your career where you're working on film shoots, and I'm talking like thousands of them, leading to millions of them, and it's freelance, and you're only making money when you're there working on set. And this is not where you're working for the studios. If you work for the studios, it's mostly going to be marketing distribution. When you work on set, you're there when we're shooting, you're there in pre-production when we're shooting, and you might be there when we're wrapping, depending on the position that you're doing. This is film production, okay? And it's a lot of variety. You shoot, we shoot all over the world. We shoot all over the city. Like we might have a shoot one day at the beach, and then you might have a shoot in downtown LA, then you might shoot at a residential house. You're working every week on film sets, and it might be different shoots. Like one week, you might have a two-day shoot, and then on the weekend, you work again on another two-day shoot, so that's four days in that week. The week after, you might have a three-day shoot. The week after, you might only work one day, and then you're like, wow, well, I now have time to do some other things that I'm interested in doing, or continue getting more training maybe go to a workshop or something. And then the week after, you've got another five-day shoot. So what you're doing, you guys, is you're making your career working on film shoots. Here's a call sheet. All these shoots that are happening, all these people that are working together, they all know each other. They trust each other. And many people have been working together for years. And this call sheet, and I know that it's far away, but it's filled with all these positions I'm talking about. We've got a director, executive producer, we've got a producer, we've got a first assistant director, we've got a second assistant director, we have a second second, we've got a DP, we've got a camera operator, we've got a steady cam, we've got first assistant camera, we've got second assistant camera, we've got head of the sound department, that's myself, sound mixer, we've got boom operator, we've got utility. We've got the head of the art department, production designer, and then we've got the lead man, and we've got the swings, and we've got the set dresser, and we've got the set decorator, and we've got multiple people in the art department. That's a big department. We've got the gaffer. We've got the lighting department. We've got the grips. We've got the key grip. We've got the best boy grip. We've got the production assistants. We've got craft service. We've got the medic. We've got the teacher. We've got the script supervisor. So now you know. Okay, I think I need pretty much all of them, right? Yes, we got locations. we got the gang boss. Catering. This is for a Hyundai commercial that I did. There is one, two, three, there's about nine production assistants and an office PA. That means that there is a lot of jobs that you can get that can get you in on this set. And guess what? Once you're in on this set, you're working with all these people, all these departments. And here's the thing, you guys. When you have all these different film shoots, like I just mentioned, you've got a three-day shoot, a two-day shoot, a one-day shoot, a 10-day shoot, maybe a month-long shoot, okay? On every single shoot, you've got different 
people, different producers, different directors, different entire lists of people, different call sheets. In fact, I got a whole bunch of call sheets here. You know, there's, here's some storyboards. That's not a call sheet, that's a storyboard. Here's a, small, here's a smaller call sheet. Okay, this is for Zillow. These are all my call sheets. Storyboard. Oh, a bigger, bigger call sheet. Okay, so all these shoots are all different people. They're all different people. So on every shoot, you have the opportunity to meet 50 to 100 different people. So think about it. You're making connections all the time. You're getting exposed. You're getting people that know you, like you, and like working with you, remember your name, and you get on their list. You get on people's lists, and you're in their phone, and you get in their day planner. And when they have a shoot coming up, and they're like, oh, who's good? Who do we need? So this is really the only question in their mind is like, who should I call? And they're like, oh, she's good. That's the only thought in their mind. And they're like, oh, let's see if she's available. And that is, that's what happens. So all of your work will come into your phone. And you'll start checking your emails all the time because it comes in through email. So these circles symbolize how you're spending your time. And right now, most of your time is being spent on your day job. Everybody's got to work. Everybody needs to make money. And this day job is probably not something that you're too passionate about. What you really want to do is your passion, which is the filmmaking, all those niches that I was talking about, right? Camera sound, hair, makeup, writing, editing, stunts, all of these, all the fun stuff. But when you're on your day job, there's, and you come home from that, you're so tired that now you've got to try to squeeze in your writing or you've got to try to make f some phone calls for your film or you've got to try to get crowdfunding or, or whatever it is that you're doing and you know what it is because it's very important to you, it's taking, most of your time is being taken up, most of your life is being taken up by this day job. And where you really want to go is you want to go where you're making all of your money in the film industry. That's this circle, the film industry. Everybody in the film industry, they don't have a day job anymore. They are now full-time in the film industry, okay? Everybody that you saw on that case study page, you guys, and you really should watch all those videos on that case study page because you'll see that all of these people, none of them, they were in the film industry before. They were all doing day jobs like call center, like banking, like pharmacist, like we've got a dentist, we're like we've got people like police officer doing jobs that were okay, but their passion was here and time was ticking and they're like, I've got to, if I'm going to do this, I've got to stop dreaming about it or doing things that are just not that effective and I've got to go full on into it. So all those people, they're full time in the industry. And how much are they making? Anywhere from $40,000 to over $100,000 a year. Even in their first year, we have some people that were making close to $100,000 a year. That would be Gorin, that would be Alicia, that would be Bridget. Uh, there's a lot of people on that page that are making that kind of money. In my first year, when I started in Los Angeles, I made $85,000 my first year in Los Angeles. Okay, so the money is there. I'm telling you, the film industry pays really well. And that's one thing that a lot of people don't really know. They, they, they think of like, oh yeah, we know that the celebrities make a lot of money. But people in the film industry make a lot as well. All the positions make a lot of money. And that's partly because you only make money when you're actually working on set. And depending on your position, you could be involved in pre-production, production, or wrapping. Or you might just be involved like I am, which is just on the shoot days. But that's okay because I might be working, say, on three shoot days, three shoot days, right? And then the next day I go to another shoot and I'm working two more shoot days. So that's five days of work. So when I'm working, you guys, I'm making around two to three thousand dollars per day. My money it comes from the film industry. And it's given me everything. Like it's kind of important for you guys to know that it's given me like you're like, okay, am I gonna make my career in the film industry? And is it really going to give me the lifestyle that I want? It certainly can. I mean, I made all my money in the film industry. Like copier sales, all that other stuff before I got in the industry, nothing compared to this. You know, this has given me 10 houses. This has given me this house here in California, uh, Lexus car, two Eurovans, trips to Europe. I take my parents every year. It's a feeling of freedom. It's a feeling of getting up in the morning and going to work, which is on a film set, seeing people that you know, that you love, that you've been working with, and being excited about your life and doing something creative. And it's always different because every script is different, every situation is different, every location is different. And there's little challenges that come up with every single shoot that you're doing. But that is fun too. So it's always different and it's high paying and it's probably the most exciting thing that you can do with your, in your life. So part of making your living in the film industry also involves travel because we shoot all over the world and people from all over the world shoot here as well. 
And by the way, you can do this all over the world. There are film shoots happening. I started in South Africa, you guys. You're going to see in another video my story of how I got into the industry. And I started in South Africa, in Africa, went through the UK, went to Jackson Hole, and then it ended up in Los Angeles. But from there, I've shot all over South America, all over the Amazon, Amazon like three times, shooting National Geographic, Discovery Channel, stuff like that. I've been down to Costa Rica and other places, other countries for film shoots. And uh, you can too. I mean, the film industry is just moving all over the place, meaning their film shoots are shooting all over the place. So if you hook up with people that are traveling and shooting in Thailand and other places, then you're going to be traveling too. So that's how I did it, and that's how it works, okay? So travel is definitely part of being in the film industry if you want it to be. If you don't want it to be and you want to stay in one place, then you can have your career just staying in one place as long as it's a place like London, Sydney, uh, Atlanta, um, Miami, uh, Denver, Los Angeles, Portland, Seattle, someplace where there is major industry happening. So if you're in like you know, Omaha, Nebraska, you may be able to start there and get experience and get on some film shoots there because believe it or not, there are film shoots happening there. In fact, there are film shoots happening, you guys, within three hours of almost every metropolitan area. Pittsburgh, there are film shoots happening. Washington, D.C. North Carolina has film shoots happening. South Carolina, T Tennessee, Nashville. Stuff is happening. It may not be enough to make maybe $20,000 a year doing just film. You might have to move then to a bigger market like Atlanta. By the way, you guys, Atlanta is the biggest film market in the entire world now. Yes, it's dwarfed Los Angeles and New York City. It is happening in Atlanta. They're calling it the Hollywood of the South. And uh, I don't see any uh, indication that it's going to be slowing down. So that, that's a great city to be in and to think about moving to in the future if you want to. Or you can come to Los Angeles or you can go to New York City or you can work in any place in the world, actually. You could work in London. When I was in Portugal, there were film shoots happening there. So it can be a great life. And we have people like Josh that got into the art department as a production designer. And when he went to London, he worked in London. When he went to Paris, he worked in Paris on film shoots. So in my opinion, that is the life. That is the quantum. This is why I do this, because I'm a traveler from what I love to do, and combining that with the film industry, it's the best of both worlds. Okay, so there's also the social lifestyle, you guys. And that means you're going out for bonfires, going out for lunch. You know, when you're on when you're working in the office to set up a film shoot. They bring in food. Everybody sits down. They have these big tables, and you're sitting with a producer, director, production designer, wardrobe stylist. You're working. You're with writers, editors. Everybody's there, you know, just hanging out. And it's so easy to have conversations, and to get to know people, and have them get to know you. And that's the secret, you guys. Working alongside people is how you build relationships. So, you know, when you're working with them, you're, like, you're not like saying, hey, you know, can you read my script or can you take a look at my reel? You're not asking for anything. You're making a relationship. You're having fun. You're making friends. How you get work for the rest of your life is people just liking you, liking to work with you. It's not even so much about your talent or how good you are at the job or how knowledgeable you are. I mean, it seems crazy. It's like, oh, if I just become really, really good at my job, then, you know, I'll be able to work all the time and people hire me. It's really more about them seeing you do your job and that it's good, but that you're working all the time and working with people that they know and connecting with them in a way that they're just like, hey, friends, friends. Um, yeah, it's that get it factor. And that just means that when somebody works with you, they're just like, oh yeah, they get it. You know, like there are times when you're on a film shoot where you have to use very little words because there's, no, there's not a lot of time and every second is money on the film set. So how you communicate, what you say, and how you say it because you got to understand what the job is of the other person and what's important to them so that when you communicate with them, you're saying what is important to them. That's that get it factor, see? So it does take some experience, it takes some knowledge, it takes some time to be able to understand all this so that you can then be able to communicate like that. But that is what gets you work. And you'll learn this over time. You're learning this through all of these film shoots, you guys. So if you are a camera, you might be shooting weddings right now. You might be doing um, corporate video type stuff, small budget stuff. You might be shooting conferences. You might be like, you know, a camera operator, but it's small budget stuff and it's kind of on the side. Or maybe if you're doing camera, maybe this is what, is what you're doing for your career. Like we've had people that are wedding photographers that are like, okay, I, I do this, I love it, I've got gear and everything, but how do I get over here? And the problem that you will run into if you are a videographer is that 
your work is awesome and everything, and it brings in some money and it's your passion, but it will never lead to this world over here. There is a disconnect between videography work and the actual film professional work, which is like the big budget stuff, like the movies and the stuff that you win Academy Awards for. That's because the wedding stuff, the videography stuff, the stuff that's on YouTube, these people over here, they're not looking for it. They're on their own film shoots, thinking about their own careers, doing their own camera work. They're not looking on YouTube or saying, hey, who can I refer work to or who does really good work out there? So it, it, this kind of work, the wedding videographer work, will never lead to this kind of work. So what does lead to this kind of work? Well, you have to get over here in this world and meet these people and work with them and talk to them. You know, talk to, all, talk to all these people in the camera department, the DPs, the camera operator, the steady cam, the first assistant camera, and you have something in common with them. So this is not very difficult. You can talk about lenses and cameras and shots and difficulties that you've come across and shooting at night, shooting in cars, shooting sports, shooting fast moving stuff, uh, sl slow motion stuff, all this stuff. And the, 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 the thing is, is you've got to get over here and be with these people like as your career so that you're always with them and then you can have a career over here completely. And this will be what you do full time in the camera department. And you may start off as a second assistant camera and then quickly move up into a first assistant camera. Then you start operating and then you start being a DP. You might start gaffing. You might start even doing DIT. All the work goes to the people that know how to play that game. And the game is getting inside the industry and making all of these relationships. Because over here, doing YouTube stuff, you can't make the relationships, can you? The, you have to work alongside people in order to make the relationships. Okay? Make sense? All right. So if you're a writer, you are probably attending some workshops, you're working on your writing, you're passionate about it, you're always writing your screenplays, and you'd probably do a lot of it from your couch your house and you've got your day job but then writing is what you just can't wait to get home and do and you probably have a lot of screenplays that you want professionals to look at and you probably send them out to agents and they're like you don't get any response or you have people saying hey I can't look at your stuff if you don't have an agent and then you can't get a response from an agent and you know if you're a writer you probably know a lot of people that are writers as well and they're like saying hey this is like acting you are there's so many writers out there everybody's got a screenplay everybody in Los Angeles has a screenplay so you know good luck making any money as a writer so that can be very discouraging especially since that's what you love to do and you want to make money doing that right the thing to do you guys is get again inside the film industry because guess what in every single shoot and these cameras signify individual shoots of which you will have thousands of them, two millions of them, but every single one of them has got writers involved. And in fact, the producer may be a writer, the director may be a writer, and there may be also writers that have written it in addition to that. And then the production designer may be a writer. There's a lot of writers on set. And the great thing about that is that you can watch, like in reality, a real real shoots, how they go down and how they get written. When you're on your couch, you may have some good ideas, but when you get on the film set and now you're around that very rich environment that's real, now that's when you have the breakthrough ideas. Now that's when you actually start writing for stuff that is actually going to get made. And since you're working with all these producers and directors, like think about it, who hires writers? How does stuff get made? Producers and directors. Now you have friends in this area and you can, they can look at your stuff and they can actually even shoot your stuff and you can meet DPs that can shoot your stuff. So I always say, like, if you want to excel, do stuff that most people don't do and go straight there. Like most writers are staying at home and working on their stuff with no idea of how the industry even works. I say go straight into that industry that you want to be successful in and meet those people and then you're going to start doing your best work and you'll start doing it right away and you'll meet people that are doing it as a career themselves. With all of these niches and this imagine this is the entire list of niches that I was talking about the fastest way to get into these niches is to model the best people. You could say copy them but really it's more like model them, watch them, see how they talk see how they dress, see what language they use, see what they do to sell themselves, see what they do when problems come up, see how they handle that, see what kind of team they put together. You can see it all. 
you can watch it all and you will learn it all. So if you want to go fast, you guys, the fastest way to go fast <laughs> is to model the best people. And then you'll also see the people that are not worth modeling that are there, but that you don't see that often. And then you can see what they're doing that creates not that much work for themselves. The way that they talk, the way that they sell themselves, the way how they handle problems. Because some people can handle it like it's just a breeze and they understand where other people are wanting and what's important to them and they use that kind of language. And some people are just coming only from their perspective and maybe get a little pissed off and just say it, blurt out what they want. And which way do you think is going to lead you to all of the work? <laughs> because as I said, this is freelance industry and it's all just a bunch of shoots. And the way that you approach the business is how much work you get and how much money you make and how successful you become. And I can tell the people that are serious because they're always the ones that watch every single video, they take notes, they come to all the live calls. They are like a shark in a feeding frenzy for their career. And I love that. that those, are, those are my people. And those are exactly the kind of people that are going to not look for the magic pill, but do what it takes to transform into being a professional that is in demand like this. Because it does take some effort to become a professional that's in demand. But it takes a lot of effort also to be unsuccessful. You know, that takes a lot of, that takes a lot of, that's a lot of stress, a lot of pressure. It's, it, that's hard. And becoming a professional that's in demand, that could be considered hard too, like challenging too. But it's a lot easier than living in stress and doing something like a career that you don't want to do and wanting to be successful but not knowing how to be successful. So writers can meet the people that hire them. You can meet everybody that will look at your stuff, distribute your stuff, get your stuff made. It may not happen in like six months. It might take like a couple of years. Who cares? This is your life. You're doing what you love and you're making money in the film industry doing what you love. That's all that matters, right? Okay, filmmaker. Oh, this is a good one. Directors. So as a director, you're shooting your own stuff. You're working your day job and you're probably taking a lot of your money and you're using it to shoot your own stuff and you're trying to get people to work for you for free, and you're trying to get crowdfunding. This is very challenging. You're writing your own stuff, you're directing it, you're wearing 10 hats, and then you're editing it, and you're ho like hoping that you're getting everything, and you're tr since you're wearing so many hats while you're shooting it, you're like, oh my God, I hope that I'm actually getting what I need. So when you get in the edit room, you're able to actually get something that you can send to the film festivals. And really, how much, how many shoots can you even do in a year when you're doing, this is hard, when you're doing all these hats and trying to get on the map, and then trying to use film festivals to get on the map. How many shoots can you do in one year? Maybe one or two, okay? You know, and that's taking a lot of your time other than your day job. So how many film professionals can you really meet when you're so focused on making your own small films? And that's a good question. How many professionals, how many relationships? Because what you need the most is for people to know you and to know your work, don't you? So you need those relationships. And that's the most important thing, right? Because your creativity is there. You could just explain your creativity and be able to get work from it. So you need relationships. You need to get over here. You must get over here. This kind of work, doing stuff that goes to the film festivals, the professionals are not at the film festivals. A lot of people that are trying to get into the business are at the film festivals. The professionals are over here working. And they're on their shoot after shoot after shoot after shoot, just like me. They're with me on these shoots, you know? And, you know, I do commercials, but there are, feature, there are millions of feature films, TV shows. There's just music videos. St stuff is being shot just all over the world all the time. And you just need to jump into this world, which is the paying world, the professional world, okay? And then you'll meet everybody. And then you'll be able to actually make a real career for real. And it's so much easier, really, than what you're doing right now. This is very hard. This is like so hard. You'll be like working, making money around people that are like-minded. And then you'll be able to do your shoots with professionals. That's a whole nother ball game. Then you'll be able to use cameras and lenses and multi-cameras and steady cams and jibs and technocranes. So much more fun. Okay, so you won't have to be doing crowdfunding anymore and you won't have to work, ask people to do you favors all the time, which I'm sure, you know, you do it, but you don't really want to do that. You don't want to worry about that. You just want to focus on what you want to create. It might take you, it can take you like just a couple months getting into this world. And then it can take you maybe a couple years to actually really grow this into being like, you know, a director that is known. 
But so what? You're doing it for real. Like, you know, when you're over here doing your own stuff, you're like, is this real? How am I ever really going to get on the map? Here you know that you're building something. So if you're an editor and you want to work in post-production or at an editorial house, you may have been sending your resume and not hearing anything. And if you're an editor, most of these people have probably gone to film school and they got a, you know, whatever. They know all the software and everything. And they've tried to get internships or maybe they've done an internship, but it's just not taking off, that's because there are so many editors out there. It's just flooded everybody is an editor, right? Because everybody knows how to edit. Everybody knows these softwares. It's not that difficult. The solution for editors is getting on set and being there when we're shooting and learning production. Now I understand. You're like, yeah, but I want to do post-production. And that's how all these other editors are thinking that aren't getting anywhere, you know? So if you want to actually stand out amongst all these people, what you want to do is you want to be extraordinary. You want to know more than everybody else. You want to know what they were thinking when they set up this shot and then this thing happened. And then they only shot this amount, but they expected to cut into here. You want to know directors and producers that are actually the ones that hire editors. You want to know why the director cut it this way and actually know the way that he was thinking and be able to explain it and articulate it. You want to do what other people don't do. And when you are working inside production and you're there on all of these shoots and you're working and you're making money when you're there and you're seeing it happen live, then you, you're going to get a vast amount of knowledge. You're going to have, it's not, it's like what you talk about when you go into the editorial house is going to be like this. And you will have done stuff that even the editors that are there, they never did that. And so they'll be like, holy shit, this is the person. You know, we could send them on set. They understand what's happening. We can, they, they have done more. They've given themselves this education, and that's impressive. So, yeah, hands down, editors, go here for at least a year and also be editing. And I'll talk about this in a second. There's a two-pronged approach to this, but totally, you guys, getting paid to learn this stuff will only make you so much of a better editor. If you're wondering, do I need to go to film school to learn these niches? so that you know, people will take me seriously? The answer is absolutely not. Everybody over in the film industry already knows that to learn these niches, you do it on sets. People learn by doing. They learn by being there. You can't learn it in a fake environment. Even doing student films where you're kind of doing it yourself and it's like your biggest project, you learn some stuff, but it's nothing compared to shoot after shoot after shoot after shoot, like the real stuff with the real budgets and the real people and the real situations, the real locations and the real equipment. I mean, everything here is how you really learn it. And you can get paid while you learn it, you guys. You don't have to be in film school and spend $100,000 and come out with, no kidding, $600 a month for 20 years that you've got to pay. $600 for 20 years. That is a boat anchor. I'm so against that. Unless, you know, you've got tons of time and somebody that's just going to pay for this for you, there's just no reason. Because when you get on these film sets, you guys, especially doing it the friends and film way, guess what? nobody's going to ask you, oh, did you go to film school? And, you know, what did you study there? They're not going to, you're already in, you already got the job. So if they talk, if they ask you about film school, they're just more like, hey, you know, did you go? Just curiosity. They're just trying to make conversation. And the next question after that is going to be, well, uh, hey, what's for lunch? <laughs> it's not going to be like, well, what did you learn? Or, you know, there, there's not going to be any interest in talking to you about film school because we're way past that. We're, it's professional now. I always say, hey, you know, why not talk to like 50 film professionals, people that are actually working in the film industry, and ask them. You know, people never do that. They're always just like, oh, I don't know anybody, so I just got to study it to get an edge. But you don't have to do it. I'm telling you, the debt is massive, and it's like a boat anchor. And you could take that money that you will be having to pay back, because there's no escaping that debt once you are giving it to the school. Uh, you can take that money, and you can make your own film with it. I think that's much better spent. And instead of paying that money, the $600 a month, you can make $600 a day working on the film set. So if you've already gone to film school and you already have the debt, the fastest way to pay it off is not with your day job. It's working on film sets because you can make anywhere for two, from $200 a day to $500 or $1,000 or more per day. Per day. That's a lot. Per day. Like I said, film industry is very high paying. Say it's special effects. Say it's makeup, say it's hair, um, 
script supervisor, uh, costumes, with wardrobe, set design, which is art department, sound, uh, special effects, makeup. I mean, I can go on and on. There are so many niche jobs in the film industry, and they're all very high paying. And right now, you might be doing these on low budget sets, low budget films, and you're working with peanuts, and you're probably volunteering your time and doing favors for people, and you're cobbling together costumes, and you're cobbling together effects, and you're, you, you know, you're going on YouTube to search how to do it, and then you're doing it, and you know, it comes out okay, but you know, you know that it's not the professional way, and in fact, you really want to learn the professional way. You know, you can't learn it all from YouTube. You want to be there. You want to model the people that are doing it and that are really good at it and learn all their little tricks. You want to have these conversations with those people anyway, right? You really do. But you may not have known how to get over here and make this like a real career that you're doing in this niche. And maybe you're like, I don't even know what I want to do, but I just want an exciting life. Well, that was myself. I just wanted an exciting life. I didn't care really what it was. I just knew I want to travel around the world, make a lot of money, and meet interesting people, have wine with people and discuss stuff that was happening all over the world and I wanted to go into places that normal people couldn't go into because I was in the film industry. I could go in and see stuff that nobody else saw. I could meet people that other people could not meet because I was in the film industry. So that was my idea of what I wanted and when you get into the industry and you're working in all these different niches, think about it, you know, there is so much to it. There is documentaries, which is what I was drawn to, wildlife documentaries, but there's also indie films, there's feature films, there's news, there's soap operas, there's talk shows, there's commercials, there's, um, there's news, there is, there's like so, corporate video, there's just so many different sectors that you can be in and learn in and you can move all over amongst these sectors and work and you can find what your niche is. You will find what your niche is, you know? Um, it could be, and you probably never thought about it. Maybe if you want to make a lot of money and you want to travel the world, maybe you want to work in commercials because those are the highest budget things. They are, they're just the cushiest jobs and they shoot all over the world, you know? So you could totally do that. Or maybe you want to stay in one place and work in commercials. Or maybe you want to travel the world doing union feature films. And if you're working in union feature films, then you are probably going to be traveling. But you also might be going to places that you don't really want to go to because they're shooting for three months in Pittsburgh. And now you're working in Pittsburgh. And then after that, they're going to Chicago. And it's the wintertime, and they're shooting night shoots. So, you know, you're going to find, and I would not worry about it now, just get into it and get it going. But you're going to find your niche. You're going to find what sector. And then you'll go. And it will be an exciting life. And it will be high, high paying. And I'll show you what the jobs are um, in this training as well, how much they pay, and that is very exciting. I'll show you the union contracts, the union contracts. Okay, so let's go to the next slide. Here is you, and here is the tornado of film work, okay? And it is a tornado because there is so much of it and it's always happening, it's always going on. The only breaks that we take is at Christmas time. Between Christmas and New Year's is the only time. Slows down a little bit in the summertime because everybody goes on vacation, but there's still lots of shoots happening then. So here's where the money is, the paid film industry, the tornado of work, this is where you wanna go to. And how are you gonna get into this? You're probably like, yes, it sounds all really good, but how am I gonna get into this? And I would say, get in any way you can. But the fastest way to get in, the way that I teach you to get in, is doing assistant jobs, production assistant jobs, office production assistant jobs, set production assistant jobs, director assistant, producer assistant, casting director assistant, writer assistant, editor assistant. These assistant jobs get you working with professionals that are key to your career, that become endeared to you because you're working with them. Think about it, it's not just one day, it's like over time you're working with these people as their assistant. And these people are professionals that have a career. They've probably been doing it for a while. They know a lot of people. And when you start off and you're young and you're, you know, 20s, 30s, and 40s, I consider all that young. And that's, and people, my gosh, if you're talking about age, let me just, as a side note, people don't even see age in the film industry. There are, pe there are people that are 20-year-olds working with people that are 60-year-olds. Everybody's just one big family working on the goal, which is getting that film shoot done. So, yeah, you, you just tend to think everybody's your age, no matter what age you're at. It's kind of like that. So, yes, don't worry about it if you're a little bit older. It doesn't matter. Everybody shares the same love, which is, you know, working on that, 
working in the film industry and having this life. You just become one of us and it's just, that's just normal. That's just the way it is. Okay, so assistant jobs are the way into the tornado of the paid work, okay? All of film shoots, the, the paid film industry, the professional industry. Now, when you're working on all these shoots in these assistant jobs, you're working with all these departments, all these departments. You're working with all these people. And the great thing about these assistant jobs is that everybody knows that you're there as an assistant. You're not, that's not your lifelong, lifelong career goal. Your goal is to get on set and learn and then move into all of these specialty niches. So people will take you under their wing and they will teach you. In like one month, if every shoot has 50 to 100 people, you could be meeting 700 people in one month. In one year, you could know like 4,000 people, 4,000 professionals. And here's the thing, you guys, even if you know a couple of professionals, you should not reach out to them until you are in the professional industry yourself working on professional sets because nobody over here wants to help you. Nobody wants to help you. Nobody wants to help anybody that's starting out. They're all too busy with their own careers. And they'd rather that you even not even come into the film industry. I mean, to be honest, they're, all, they're kind of like, oh, you know what, you're going to be my future competition. I don't really want you around. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's why people are kind of like, if you've been asking for help, they're kind of like, yeah, well, I'll do this and this and this, and they don't really care. Once you're there working, you guys, then people are like, oh, I like you. Hey, they're not even thinking about it anymore. Now you are a film professional just like them, and they will share with you everything that they know. So once you're in, then they will share with you. You might be thinking, oh, I just need one or two people to maybe send me some work and I'll be able to build it from there. But what I want to tell you is that since this is a business of all relationships and connections, you need to get good at creating hundreds of relationships and connections and juggling this all and keeping in touch and reaching out and making a career out of it. You know, like somebody like Will Smith, he didn't just like rely on one or two connections. That guy, if, you, if you've seen some of his videos, he's like, nobody can outwork me. And that's the, what you want to do is you want to have that feeling. It's like, hey, nobody can outwork me, outwork me. I know what to do, and I'm building my connections by the masses. And then you know that you're going to have a good career because so many people want to be in this film industry. And so many people think, oh, I just need somebody to hook me up because they're just, they, they don't want to think about it. They don't want to build it. They don't want to become exceptional and be really good at building this thing. So they're just like, yeah, like hope, hoping that it's going to work that way. But let me tell you that there, there's so many people out there that work in this business. There are top people that work all the time. And there are people that don't work that much. And the top people that work all the time, like myself, we are in demand. And because of that, we qualify easily for medical and retirement and all the, all the good stuff. So it's really a career. Then there are a lot of people that have been in the business and they're already in. So they're several years ahead of you and they're professionals, but they don't work that much. They don't qualify for medical and their retirement is not much and the mental state is difficult because they didn't learn the most important thing, which is how to continuously build and maintain these relationships and keep this thing, keep this game running and rolling. You can work in this tornado of work, doing these assistant jobs and having all these people mentor you, take you under their, your, their wing, and you can figure out what niche you really want to be in and how to do it by, by modeling the best people. And at the same time, you can do your own stuff. You can take the niches that you really want to do, the writing, the directing, producing, the hair, the makeup, the sound, whatever it is, and you can also do your own stuff. But it's at a different level now because now, since you know all these professionals, you're also doing stuff at the professional level. You, you probably, if you're a DP, you have access to cameras now. You have access to people that have cameras and lenses and lights. You have access to professional gaffers now. So your, your stuff is done at a whole different level, which, I mean, that's like super important. And the thing is, is that these people down here, the producers and directors that hire, say, for example, camera people, you're working with them down here. Then you talk about your shoot that you're shooting this week. Now down here, they might know you as a producer assistant or director assistant. You talk about something that you're shooting this week as a DP. Now in their head, they're like, oh yeah, DP and director assistant. And they know that you're using these assist assistant jobs to 
move into the niches. So now what happens with all these people that you know, these hundreds of thousands of connections, now what happens is they refer you to the niche that is what you really want to do. They refer you to the niche that is what you really want to do. And this is the Quan, you guys. Yes, that is a crown. This is you doing your niche. Like mine is sound mixer, head of the sound department. That's my niche, and that's where I'm making all the money. The assistant jobs, you're making, you know, $200 a day, okay? The niche jobs, you're making $500, $1,000 a day or more in all these niches that I just talked about, okay? And this is when you are, got your medical. This is when you've got your retirement. This is when you're making your major money. This is when you've got your training ground right here in the tornado of work all the time. And, you guys, listen to me now. When you're on all these film shoots, you're working with these people that are in your niche, and they're like, oh my god, I like you, I like how you did this. Oh, hi, I have this question now. Uh, this happened to me on my shoot the other week, and I didn't know how to handle it, and blah, blah, blah. And they'll be like, oh, let me tell you. And they will love to do that. And what you're doing, you guys, is you are assembling your team for your niche. And if it's writing, you're assembling your team for writing. Oh, I got block here. What did you do? Oh, you know, I'm trying to work with this head writer that's giving me these ideas and I really want to make them go this way. So you will have a team of people. They will be like your own little success group, your success circle. And you guys, I, it, it helps so much to have professionals that have your back and they know you because you work with them all the time. And, you know, I remember when I was starting off, I, I, this, I did what, what I'm teaching you guys to do. And I had some, I, I was doing shoots that I had never done, like earwig stuff and playback. And while they're, we're doing dialogue at the same time, so it was complicated stuff. And they're like, hey, can you do this? I'm like, yes. <laughs> and then I'm calling my, the people that I had met. I had a list of people, just like you will have a list. Yes, you will have a list of people. And you're like, I'm like holy shit, Gary, how do I do this? And I'm like, they want to do this. And he's like, well, ask them this question. So I'm like, okay. Hey, so what about this? <laughs> and they're like, well, it's going to be like this and this and this. I'm like, Gary, they said this and this and this. So, you know, I had a team of people that they help you be successful. And, you know, when you're on the outside, you're not going to have any team. But when you're on the inside, you're working with people and they know you. They're, they're part, become part of family. Now they help you with their career. Okay? So the team is super important. Oh, I don't even have this over here. Well, it's really friends. The friends in your team are going to be super important for you. Okay? So, you know, if you're doing camera and all of a sudden somebody says, hey, can you do, do the DIT job this week? And you're like, sure. And then you're like, I've never done that job before. So what do you do? You need to have your team of professionals that you work with and you're like, hey, what are the most important thing? Is there a sequence to this? What to, can I do that, that um, will make it easier? And what should I look out for? Where have you made mistakes in this? Where are there stumbling blocks? What can really fuck things up, you know? I mean, I, I would ask them a lot of questions just like that. And you write it down and then you, got, then you have the procedure. Oh, these here are just some of my people that are working in the film industry. And these people started where you're starting now, some of you guys, you know, everybody starts at different places, different experiences, done different things, won different awards, but um, these people were wanting to work in the film industry, making their living mostly outside of the business, and now they're all working in the industry. So now you're like, hey, this big goal that you have of making a career in your niche, it's not that far away, especially if you know how to do it like in a real way. So you should feel excited, you should feel relaxed, you should feel like I found something this, that now could be really the answer for stopping the struggle of doing the day job and trying to figure it out on your own, now you realize, oh yeah, there's a way to do this, a real way. Okay. Well, thanks everybody. Bye-bye.